Hello everyone, this is Zigzag, also known as Oscar. Welcome to my new channel. The purpose of this channel is just going to be to play GeoGuessr games and explain exactly what I'm thinking, kind of aimed at newer players so that they can improve at the game faster and just learn some stuff. So that is pretty much it. It's going to be no editing, so hopefully this all goes well for my first try. And uh, yeah, I say let's get into the first challenge, which you can play along with in the description. So hit the first link in the description, which will be the play along link to play. You should play that before me, and then you can come back and see how I did better or exactly how I came up with my thought process or if you beat me and uh, that's gonna be fun also there'll be next week's games or next episodes games uh, below that in the description as well so you can play this this ep this episodes and then next episodes as well so that's pretty much it I've got the car off here so that that uh, is gonna make things a little bit more difficult and a bit more you know I'll, I'll explain things without using the Google car and uh, let's get straight into the first round here which I can immediately tell is going to be somewhere in Kenya so let's run through the reasons I know that so Kenya is a country that uses white outer lines and yellow inner lines we also have yellow plates here and we also have this wooden pole with like kind of a thin crossbar at the top i mean that's the kind of the thing you learn as you play a bit more but yeah some countries have thinner crossbars some ones have thicker ones kenya is a country that tends to use thinner crossbars and wooden poles like that okay taking a look around here we actually do have a bit of a google car here which has the antenna and we also if we are going to use a little bit of google car here because it's actually not fully hidden we have the tapes on the google car here which means we're going to be somewhere central in kenya that is uh, something that people have discovered that the the tape in kenya tends to run from about here to here so uh yeah given that it's green probably somewhere around Nairobi here it's a bit hilly so that would definitely fit for this kind of area north which is just a bit hilly and quite green and uh yeah I mean we could find a place name here but ultimately I'm pretty happy uh with just guessing there is there anything else to say here I mean yeah Kenya's pretty easy even without the car just look in this direction pretty much immediately new and uh, there'll normally be something for you to be able to get it so there we go let's guess there and it ends up being a little bit further north near Mount Kenya there but that's a good start to the series so let's uh continue on to the next one here which is looking a little bit more challenging, I would say. Okay, so let's take a look around here. No Google card to help us out this time, which is good. Uh, we are in a forest. So a big part of rounds like this is just going to be to try and determine what kind of forest this is, how cold it is, um, what part of the world we think it's actually going to be. Um, it is kind of difficult to describe why, but I do think this is Europe. So let's run through why this might be Europe. I would say the, the road is paved and, it, and it's quite thin. Um, generally speaking, in North America, you might... In, in a forest like this have a dirt road maybe but obviously you can see plenty of, of dirt roads and paved roads in both Europe and North America but I was just thinking in a similar forest like this it might be more likely to be unpaved there and then also um, there's the fact that this road is quite thin and I feel like in North America generally speaking they just make thicker roads they just make uh, wider roads which is uh, not always the case, but generally speaking, the case. Okay, this one also feels like quite a cold climate. These these rocks with the moss on them and these ferns both seem kind of colder climate looking, um, you know, vegetation and, um, yeah, and trees as well. Tr trees are relatively thin here. We have some pines mixed in with some birch, so that would definitely indicate kind of a more northern climate. I mean, pines you can find all through kind of the center of Europe and then birches more so towards the north. But yeah, even birches you can find fairly central, like Czechoslovakia, that kind of kind of thing. Um, and so what are we thinking here? Well, I've always known that uh, Sweden is a particularly rocky country for whatever reason. Um, and uh, I could definitely see this being a Swedish forest. I could also see Finland here, perhaps even Poland or one of the Baltics. Although generally speaking, a road like this would be unpaved in the Baltics. They tend to have a lot of unpaved roads in that part of the world. But okay, here we have like a fence that, that could help us out potentially. Not really too sure. I think really my heart kind of lies with uh, Sweden here just because we have these exposed rocks, which, uh, which I think are quite common over there. Um, we also have a bridge here, which doesn't really help me. So I think we'll just go for the guess here. Um, ultimately, this is a round without too many clues, especially like in the Google car, uh, makes it th more difficult. If, we're, if, we're, w if we did have the Google car there, we could probably see a long antenna, which would help us get Sweden. But uh, yeah, I think I'll go in the center of Sweden here. And it actually was in Southern Sweden. So that is a really nice guess. Um, so hopefully you guys were able to get that one. Um, again, that was kind of a general description, but that was a hard round. We easily could have missed the country there. I wouldn't have been surprised if it was elsewhere. Okay, next one here. Let's take a look around here and uh, hopefully I can explain why I think this one's going to be somewhere in North America. Well, the first thing uh, to note here is that we have like a GMC truck and a Ford truck. They're big pickup trucks, obviously the type of thing you're more likely to see in North America. 
Um, then, I mean, just looking at these yellow signs here, I mean, this kind of, this kind of arrow sign would probably be something with a, a white sign with a red border, uh, somewhere over in Europe, I would say. These, uh, bollards here are also very American. They often use really thin ones with, like, a, a bigger reflector, um, that's actually thicker than the actual, uh, bollard itself. Um, and that is about it. So then we have to look at the landscape and the trees here. So we do have quite a number of like pine trees here. And, uh, we also have a number of these kind of more Northern looking trees as well with the white trunks could be birches. I think so maybe birches here. Um, so that's pretty much the mix similar to the last round. So if we think about latitude wise, we were in Sweden last time that would put us at this latitude, but things in Europe are a bit warmer because of the currents. So you kind of have to transpose everything down South a bit. And I guess particularly the reason we're going to be doing that is because we have these American American style ballads. These ones you would not really find so much in Canada, um, especially just this particular style would not really be Canadian. Okay, so then what else are we looking at here? We're also looking at these number plates. This one, I believe, is a... Is that a Utah plate or an Idaho plate? It's one of the two, forgive me for my lack of knowledge. In American number plates, I have not uh, remembered them all yet, but I think it's probably a Utah plate, but I don't really think this looks like Utah. I think these trees are a bit too northern, so it's probably traveling. Uh, and this, this plate over here is more white, so that one's maybe more local, but I'm not really sure what plate it would actually be. Um, as for the actual landscape here, I kind of thought of Ohio or Wyoming here, maybe even Montana kind of in this tri-point region here. Um, and the reason for that is is we have like um, generation four dirt road coverage. Um, if you don't understand that, don't worry. Um, but uh, we, yeah, we just we just have like kind of a very like rural landscape. Doesn't look like many people live around here. It seems like it would probably snow quite a lot in the winter. Um, and then it's hilly as well. And this whole part in the Rocky Mountains is obviously hilly and mountainous. Um, so that's pretty much what I'm thinking here. Um, yeah, so this one is kind of a, a knowledge of about a few different things to help us get there. I think I might guess Southern Montana here, but yeah, expect it to be one of these three states with this slight possibility of Dakotas or Washington or Oregon or something like that. And it ends up being, yeah, it ends up being all the way west in uh, South Dakota there. Um, these hills are kind of more unique because the rest of South Dakota is quite flat, but yeah, you do get these kind of hills over here. So yeah, we, um, we miss out. We're only one state over, I guess, technically, but yeah, not the best guess, not the worst either. Uh, let me know how you went on that. That one. Uh, next one here. Let's take a look around here. Also, this this series is not meant to be a competitive thing. So um, I'll be looking at people's guesses in the next episode, but I won't be looking at the top guys. I'll just kind of pick out some people and uh, describe how they could have done better. So hopefully you can get picked out in the next episode and all that kind of thing. Um, anyway, so let us describe why exactly I think this one might be somewhere in Europe. So the first thing to notice is that we have these white center lines. And generally speaking, in North and South America, with the exception of Chile, you should be using uh, yellow center lines. So that is the, the first thing I'm noticing here. Um, the second thing I'm noticing is that uh, these buildings do not feel very North American at all, nor do they feel Chilean. And uh, they feel quite European. I think that's fair to say we got this tiled roof over here. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. We also have a bunch of concrete poles here. This particular style is common in some countries and not others. With these two knobs either side like that, I could say you could see that in Italy, uh, Serbia, maybe like Croatia, Montenegro, um, Albania for sure. You can see it in, I think, Romania, Russia, probably Ukraine. Not really sure about Ukraine actually. But yeah, it's definitely the type of poll you do see around the spot. And uh, so yeah, now it's kind of a matter of considering uh, the number plate over there, which is not really quite visible. Um, considering this church over here, and then considering the general landscape of the place as well. I think this is actually going to be Russia, and the main th the main reason I say that is just these houses. These houses feel quite Russian to me. I would say the only two big possibilities here are Russia and Romania, um, because as I said, they're two countries that use these poles, and uh, obviously it seems like a bit of a poorer country with this much litter on the side of the road as well. Um, and then looking into the distance, I mean, it is very flat here, which probably fits better for Russia than Romania, in all honesty. Um, and this how this church almost looks orthodox. However, I'm looking at this and I see a holy pole here, so I actually think it might be Romania um, instead. Maybe, I don't really know, because I, I thought Romania was more of a Catholic country. I could be wrong about that, actually. Um, starting to doubt myself, but yeah, I think, I think like maybe in this section you might get some more orthodox influence or something like that. So that's kind of my idea here. Um, yeah, I guess I, without this holy pole, I'd probably actually go Russia here, but yeah, holy poles, uh, 
Fat holy poles are found in Hungary and Romania, and then thin holy poles are found in all three, uh, including Poland. So yeah, thinking this is just Romania, uh, especially with this exact style here. If you can remember that, that should be helpful. Now, could this still be Hungary? I don't think I've seen these pole tops um, in Hungary before, so I think I will stick with Romania here. Let's find out if we're correct about that. And it was actually in Southern Romania there, but we got the country. Kind of a more difficult one, especially without the Google car, but yeah, definitely an interesting one. So let's move through, through to the next around here. Ooh, immediately this one is gonna be a bit of architecture guesser. Well, let me, let me uh, run through it once we've taken a look around here. So this is how the round looks. Um, first things first, we've got the bollards. So this type of bollard um, you can see in Austria, in Slovenia, and in Montenegro. That's the, the three countries where this one's the most common. Red reflector, black top, and often you have like a nipple at the top as well, which you can see here, which actually has an orange thing inside sometimes. But you'll probably only see the black top most times. Um, and then we have the landscape here. We have mountains. Obviously that fits for all three countries, um, but with snow-capped mountains, probably Slovenia and Austria more likely here. Uh, so let's take a look down the road here. Nothing too helpful that way. Um, this uh, this house here tells me that we absolutely should not be in Montenegro, but instead in Slovenia or Austria. And the reason for that is this black section next to the roof. We can see that on this house over here as well. This section that cuts off the top and this section that cuts off the top is just... It is just simply the, the style of architecture that they have over there. Interestingly, you can actually see that a little bit in southern Brazil because they have a lot of German ancestry in that part of the world. So you can see a bit of German architecture there as well. But yeah, this is just typical German-Austrian style architecture. And we have a bit of language here to help us out. To be honest, I was not sure when I was looking this direction or even this direction what country it should be. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I would say with this German language, we should just be somewhere in Austria. Now the snow-capped mountains probably are more typical of Austria, which, you know, has this whole section of snow-capped mountains here. Whereas uh, in Slovenia, you probably would only see it in like this section here, I feel. The other mountains in the rest of the country are not quite as big. Um, and so, yeah, I'm thinking Austria here. I kind of feel a bit southern and with the bigger mountains here, so maybe around this kind of section here, but yeah, not really sure. Um, Anything else to mention here before I move on to the next round? A uh, fire hydrant is probably helpful here, but I don't actually know it. Poles, um, uh, yeah, not really too helpful in Austria because they're not all that common. So I'd focus more on other things like language. We do have a plate here with a bit of red on it. You can actually make out a little bit of red here. And so that is something you definitely see in Austria. And I don't think you see that in Slovenia. So that is probably the final nail in the coffin here to prove that we're basically definitely in Austria. So let's go for the guess here and see if we're right. Right, and it ends up being yet yeah, all the way south there near Slovenia. That's why I was kind of confused at the start. And so we get a good score there. So that is the end of the game, 21,000, which is a good start to the series, I would say. And now I wanted to do one on one of my favorite maps, which is called Region Guessing. Now, Region Guessing is a map that only includes the 20 biggest countries in the world. So definitely when you're playing this one along, be sure to only guess in the 20 biggest countries because that is all that will be available. But okay, let's head into this game and see how we're able to do today. And first one here is immediately obvious for the country, but uh, I will uh, I'll take a whole look around here so that people who are only playing along on the screen instead of playing can uh, get their points of view sorted out. So actually, I think this one's going to be somewhere in France. And the big, big clue for that is that this blue... Um, kind of circular sticker on the pole. We call it a sticker, I'm not sure if it's really a sticker, but it is only found in France. Within Europe, it's only found in France. You can see it in certain parts of Australia as well, maybe in certain other parts of the world, but in Europe, you can basically 99.5% send France when you see this. Uh, then taking a look into the distance, we have this kind of architecture, very French as well. Like this, is, this put, makes it beyond a reasonable doubt that we're gonna be in France. Um, struggling to put a region on this kind of architecture. I don't really think it's this part of the country here, but maybe more this part of the country. I know that's very general, but it's kind of the way I'm feeling here. Uh, it does almost feel a little bit English, kind of feels a bit English influenced or something like that. Uh, so maybe Brittany is possible here, but at the same time, it's hard to tell at this distance. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about the architecture here. Wooden pole, normally France uses concrete poles, but they have a fair number of wooden ones as well, like this one here. Um, and the final thing to say here is that we got these, um, we got these hedgerows, and hedgerows, uh, like this one particularly, are, uh, generally speaking, found in Ireland, England, and France. That is pretty much most of the hedgerows you'll see in the world, so good to keep in mind, I would say. Um, I think I would kind of just guess here, near Le Mans, um, I hope it's decent, um, 
you know, feels like that kind of region, so let's see it. And it ends up being not too bad. Actually, it was all the way near Britain there, so that definitely makes sense. Um, but I think if I was closer to the building, I could have told better, but yeah, I was right. I was in that western half of the country. So let's move on to the next one here. Okay, here we are in Australia. This is my home country, and uh, we know that because of this bollard here, which is has the right, r the right side has the red reflector, and uh, that's set up for left-hand drive. We have all-white road lines, um, and we have a lot of eucalyptus trees here. This, uh, this is a eucalyptus tree, so it's this one. Um, these are the typical Australian trees, and if you play enough GeoGuessr, you'll get to recognize these bad boys because they show up everywhere. Okay, so um, given that we are in Australia, the question is now, where is a good place to go? So uh, one thing to note here is that the red on this uh, bollard is about half the length of a normal one. Normally the red would extend a bit further downwards here, and uh, the reason for that is that, uh, well, I don't know what the actual reason is, but but that actually points to, generally speaking, South Australia or Queensland. Now, it's not always the case. Um, in fact, I would, I would I'd advise you to check the landscape first before you use that to influence your guess. But if you are in a situation with relatively few clues like this round, then I would say you should use this because... This should probably mean that we're in Queensland, and the reason I say that is because um, we feel kind of tropical, and South Australia just has no tropical climate to it at all. It's completely non-tropical. So, yeah, I guess we should be somewhere kind of in central or southern Queensland here. Um, it's quite green, so we can't be too far inland here. I mean, you can see grass in here, but with this many trees, somewhere around Mount Isa, Cloncurry, it's just not possible. Um, and so that is the next question, where to? We, we are fairly flat here, but nothing, nothing too flat. I'm kind of just placing myself near Rockhampton here. I could see this being quite a bit further north or south, so it's a bit of a hedge, as we say. Um, is there anything else to say here? A bit of red soil. That's not too helpful. Kind of Queensland is very, very diverse in terms of soil color, I would say. So I think I'll just go for the guess here. Hopefully this is not too far away, and it ends up being a pretty good guess there, actually. 189 kilometers away in Australia is pretty good effort, so let's move on to the next round. Okay, next one here. Ah, this is interesting. So, uh, taking a look around, I actually was not quite sure um, what the country was until I turned around, but actually there's actually there's, there's plenty of things to get the country here. So first off, we've got the poor camera quality. Unfortunately, it's part of the game, and this kind of poor camera quality with an ultra-wide blur, and kind of, uh, it's kind of all feels a bit pink. Can you see, like, how the sky and even everything, it feels a little bit pink? Well, that kind of coverage is found in India, and Nigeria. At the time of filming, they're the only two countries that have that. Um, we also have this police car following us, and basically when you uh, find yourself in Nigeria, you should, should always, or almost always, have a police car following you. So that is, that is pretty much what we're looking at here. I think this is one of these Nigerian police cars following us. It should be a Toyota Hilux, generally speaking. And uh, we are driving right-hand side of the road. Obviously, India drives left, so we can distinguish it that way. A um, bunch of motorbikes, that also helps. Uh, the, 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 the traditional dress here, especially these kind of long flowing gowns, are going to help me in my guess here because Nigeria is basically split down the middle, Christian and Muslim. And you can say Abuja is kind of that halfway point, everything north of Abuja, or, you know, it probably, it probably runs a bit different. But generally speaking, north of Abuja, you will see the Muslim population more so than the Christian one. And I think that's what these longer garments are. I think this might be a Muslim woman and this might be a Muslim man. And that's... Uh, generally speaking, how they dress uh, over in uh, Muslim Muslim countries. So that's my thought here. Um, also, I think this poor quality camera is more common in the north of the country as well. So that, that would uh, help us out. It's very flat here. It's very dry. I'm thinking of just kind of guessing somewhere near Kano, which is where a lot of the coverage is. Um, is there anything else to say here? We got like very kind of like sandstony architecture. Um, but yeah, I think this one's pretty self-explanatory, so I'll just go for the guess, and we end up being very close indeed, 67 kilometers away, very nice. So we're actually on for a flyer this time. And, uh, okay, we have a fun little round here, let's take a look around. So if you're starting out on GeoGuessr, one of the best things to know is that South Africa and Australia can easily be distinguished if you have outside lines. So if you have outside lines and they're yellow, well, that's always going to be South Africa. You're basically never going to see that in Australia, exceptionally rare. So given that that's the case, this should be South Africa. Um, you can also see that in Lesotho, Eswatini, Botswana, and then over in the Middle East. But on a round like this, this should just be South Africa. Um, it feels quite temperate, also not too hilly. Uh, both Eswatini and Lesotho are quite mountainous, really. So, yeah, it is hilly, but nothing, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy. And so, for that reason, we can say that this is South Africa. Um, also, if you understand gen camera generations, then yeah, this is generation two, which is only South Africa as well. So then, uh, the question is whereabouts to go. Um, 
this one's a little bit tougher. Even though I've been studying South Africa recently, um, I'm kind of getting mixed messages from this one. Okay, this this house almost feels a bit more, you know, English or Australian or something like that. I find that generally speaking, houses like this are more common in the south of the country, in the Capes, East Cape, West Cape. Um, however, that's not hard and fast, and so I wouldn't trust it too much. Um, but in the absence of all other clues, I still might try for that. I'm, I'm kind of thinking this region here, you know, some hills, you know, maybe this is all a bit too mountainous, but some hills like this in this kind of region, I feel like works decently. Now it could also just be up in the north of the country, but I didn't get that feeling quite as much. I could also see maybe this region of uh, Western Cape as well working. But yeah, basically it's uh, a matter of here using the topography um, that you can see on the map. You can see big mountains here, kind of smaller hills here, and then lining it up with what you see in the round, which is, you know, kind of bigger hills maybe in the distance there, and then over this direction, not too much at all. And actually, um, I have the compass disabled. Let me uh, turn that on. So yeah, that's to the north that we have these big hills. So maybe, maybe actually where I clicked makes less sense without too many hills to the north. I might try this section instead over here. So... Hopefully that works decently. Um, I think it might. I think it might. Um, but yeah, my guess will be Western Cape here. Let's find out if we're correct about that. Ooh, and we end up being 24 kilometers away. Good that I turned the compass on and saw that the big mountains were to, to the north. That's a really good tip. If you if you can use the compass to determine where big mountains are, then you can definitely maximize points that way. And so on for a great score here. Let's uh, see if we can finish it out strong. And the last round looks pretty challenging. So let's take a look around here. First off, we have language here. Um, that looks like it's going to be somewhere in... Hmm, we have some Spanish, we have some English, so a touristy part of Mexico, maybe? Obviously, we're playing a uh, map with only big countries, so Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, maybe Peru, Chile, I'm not really sure, uh, all options here. We have a single yellow line, so a single yellow line would be quite uncommon to see in Argentina and Brazil. It's also tropical, so now I'm thinking Colombia, Mexico, really most likely here. Um, the English probably reminds me more of Mexico, and also the fact that we don't have any yellow number plates, which you would see in Colombia. So yeah, we just kind of have more like vanilla looking white number plates in Mexico, generally speaking. Uh, a bit of blue on them, like each state has its own plate, so it's definitely learnable, but uh, you know, there's, it's quite difficult to learn Mexican ones because they often look just kind of plain light. Okay, so very tropical indeed. I'm kind of thinking this is more in the southern half of the country. Uh, north half is probably a bit more uh, drier than this, so I'm thinking anyone, anywhere from like northern or southern um, Hidalgo all the way down to uh, Chiapas here is probably possible. And so I don't think I want to go too far from... Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of between, like, in this, when you see this greenery, it's like Mexico City area where I'm drawing my circle here, or kind of Chiapas area, especially if it's hilly like this. I'm being drawn towards Chiapas, but, yeah, I'm actually not entirely sure which way I prefer here. It's not too easy to say. Also, uh, another thing to mention is that this couldn't be Brazil because the number plates are too short. Like, the, the Brazilian number plates would be quite a bit longer, so that's another way to remember if you can't remember the, that single yellow line. Um... Yeah, obviously, I'm kind of tempted to go just near Mexico City because there is often such coverage near there. But I think I'm going to back myself and try out a Chiapas here. So let's give that a go. I mean, it's a little risky, but but we like to live on the edge here. Let's see it. And it will just be all the way on the West Coast there. Interesting. So, yeah, that was always a possibility. Um, and, uh, you know, it is, it's a difficult round. So let's see how many of you guys got it right. If you just click Mex Mexico City, you still get decent points there. So not with 20,000 points. It was going super well until the end, uh, especially these three guesses. In fact, all four of the four, first four guesses were good. And we got 10 countries right for the video. So that's really nice. The only really hard one here was Mex uh, was Sweden. Everything else, I think, was uh, rel relatively achievable. So I hope you guys learned something from this. I think uh, basically people people of all level should be uh, enjoying it. If you haven't played next week's or tomorrow's games or whenever I film the next episode, then go ahead and do that in the description. And then I should be able to come through and uh, teach you guys a little bit about the next games. And uh, do feel free to comment what maps you'd like to see coming up. I'll, I could probably pick top comments and whatnot, but for tomorrow's games, they're all gonna be um, suggested um, by me. So yeah, check them out. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, there we go, one take. We're all good. Goodbye.